Wicca will deny the existence of, of Satan. They will say that he's a Christian thing, that there's nothing, that they don't believe in the devil. And for some of them, that might be true. But as I like to tell these people, just because you don't believe in the devil doesn't mean he doesn't believe in you. <laughs> Let's get into this week's video. That is where it started in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. And then after everything got legalized, after the, the 50s, it, it really got, because it kind of rode on the wave of the whole hippie thing. You know, it started up in the, in the mid 60s and uh, sexual freedom and, you know, dope and all of these things. It, all, it was all kind of a perfect storm for Wicca to go forward. Wait, I thought you said it went back to the time of the Tower of Babel. Down through the centuries, through the millennia, all the way back, to the days of the Tower of Babel, there were magicians, there were occultists, but they were more like Satanists than witches. Which is it, Mr. BS? There is no doubt that the 60s were a time of social exploration, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I agree that this social period has led to its popularity, but when we look back in the early 50s, there were already interests in pre-Christian religion, even going back to the 17th and 18th century with the Celtic or Druid revival. There are problems with all this, because they'll try and say, oh, we're just all white light, we just go out and love to dance in the forest and gather herbs and worship nature and dancing gardening enjoying nature those monsters so wonder they stole a man's one-eyed trouser mouse hug a tree and blah 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 and you gotta understand there's a huge there are two huge correlations with wicca with contemporary popular culture not even counting hollywood yes it's the witch's fault that our society is facing challenges. It is obviously evil forces at play, and I'm sure you've twisted some bizarre logic into connecting Hollywood, Gerald Gardner, and his Wicca. I mean, the connection is so obvious. Those would be number one, Wicca and the environmental movement, which are just like this. And, and mind you, I'm all in favor of taking care of the environment, as it says in Genesis, being good stewards. Witches care about the environment, too? Wow, Bill, you are really opening my eyes up to these evil sausage stealers. Dancing, gardening, enjoying nature, and caring about the environment. When will these horrible, wicked people be purged from our society? Of the creation. Uh, but these environmental extremists, no. Now, the other thing, which is even more serious, is the confluence between Wicca and feminism and abortion. Uh, feminism started rising up in the, in the late 60s, and all of this stuff was kind of coming out at the same time. The 50 through 60s counterculture gave rise to civil disobedience, the civil rights movement, and women's rights. Abortion may be supported by many witches, but witches and pagans are all individuals with their own individual opinions. Opinions. You are trying to frame Wicca as somehow having an influence in all these things, and that's a really sloppy assumption. Fun fact, Mr. Potato Head was patented in 1952. Maybe this had an influence on Gardner. Both Wiccans regard abortion as a sacred thing. It's almost like a sacrament to them. You are conflating individuals' choice with a sacrament practiced by the Wicca. Individuals may share rituals to mark various life events, but I have not come across any widely accepted abortion ceremony or ritual. I'm trying to stay to the bare bones of such a diverse belief system. And of course, Satanists are right out in the open. They say, yes, abortion is a satanic right. Wiccans don't say that, but they very much are in favor of abortion being free and available to every woman that wants to do it. Well, Bill, I'm one of those who believe that health care should be affordable and available, and I believe in freedom of choice. But my opinion has no bearing on the Wicca. Would you like to talk about how many of the Wicca like smooth jazz over acid jazz? Our favorite painters? No? All right. Suit yourself. Beyond what I've already said, there are serious problems with it. Number one, Virtually all Wiccans reject Yeshua. They don't believe he's God. Sure, I'll give you that one. Most probably don't. They don't believe they need to be saved. Yes, Bill. If they did, why would they be witches? To go around stealing men's manhood every Sabbath takes 
dedication and devotion. Witches have some stiff competition. All of this uh, totally anti-biblical theology. And of course, there are a few. There's actually a book called Christian Wicca. I don't know how they get through that. I mean, I've read the book, and it's kind of goofy. The other big thing, and this is important, is the idea of the magical worldview versus the biblical worldview. We haven't agreed upon a universally accepted worldview? Why didn't anyone tell me about this? During lockdowns, I missed so many of the Luciferian Illuminati secret meetings we had at Denny's. (sighs) Because, you see... These are two radically different ways of looking at the world. And in the Bible, as most of you understand, I'm assuming most of you listening to this are are Christians, we have this idea of a sovereign deity. Then, Then the idea is that we as followers of Yeshua, as children of Elohim, we pray to him as as our heavenly father and beseech him to grant us things, whether it's, you know, to be moral, to give us help with walking a moral life, or whether it's we need a job, or maybe we need healing. You know, there's also where we just, we ask him for things, just like a child would ask a parent. As a Christian, you ask God for things, like a child would ask a parent. Okay, I think I understand your worldview. You ask God for things. Got it. Now, here's the difference. Magic is predicated upon the idea of that the universe, the cosmos, is this um, impersonal machine. It's kind of like a vending machine. And that there, there is no really personal God. You are the God, in effect. You control your universe. And if this sounds familiar, it's because it's also in the New Age movement. And the idea is, is that if you know the right spell, quote-unquote, if you, if you like, just like if you were to go to a vending machine and you wanted a, you know, a bag of potato chips out of it and you stuck a dollar bill in it and hit the button, boom, you know, the, the um, potato chips would drop down at the bottom and you'd have them. It was automatic. That's the magic worldview. The idea that if you have the right secret words, the right um, spell, formula, you can get the universe to just give you whatever you want. Ah, I get it. So instead of praying to God like a child asking their parents, witches have secret words to rig vending machines. Well, either way, they're getting their potato chips. That's a problem. Because, for one thing, I was a witch. Um, Basically, I was a high priest for nine years. I was a witch for 16 years. And a lot of times, magic didn't work like that. We did all sorts of magic for healing, for jobs, for fertility, for for couples, you name it. And three quarters of the time, it didn't work. And I was a pretty, you know, high level witch at this time. I mean, I've been practicing various kinds of magic and witchcraft for over a decade. Bill, how long do you think a decade is? Three years? You want healing? Go to a doctor, a real doctor. You want a job? Look for one. You want fertility? Get busy. That is, assuming no one flew away with your family jewels or curdled your cream. Magic didn't work, huh? Did you use the right spells in conjunction with the secret words? But, you know, so it, it basically it's all bogus. Because uh, the idea the, of the, of you, if you have these certain spells, then the universe has to give you stuff. And I don't want to get into all the details of this. Yeah, you're just talking about Wicca. Don't go into too much detail or your viewers might actually learn something. Number two... The error is that they also see no problem in bringing in occult materials into their children's lives. You know, things like Harry Potter, um, Goosebumps, all these different occultic-based, because let's face it, a huge amount of children's entertainment, whether it's books or movies or TV programming, is just heavily into the occult. I don't need to belabor this point. Actually, please do. Please belabor this point. I want to hear exactly how Goosebumps is heavily occult. In what way, Bill? Does Harry Potter give the secret words? The only thing pagan parents worry about is their children bringing home Bibles and crucifixes into their lives or being exposed to the 700 Club on TV. It's absolutely a lie from the pit of hell. 
magic is real, but it's powered by the demonic. And we'll talk about that now. Oh, and of course, magic is powered by the demonic. See, magic is also a seductive thing. Because, and I can say this firsthand. Oh, that's right. You were a drugged out sexual predator in a witch coven for three years, back in Boston, after 1973. Mr. B.S., this doesn't make you an expert in anything. Is magic a seductive force? Or did you want drugs, sex, and power? Billy Boy, the single thread of commonality throughout all your excursions from Catholicism, the occult, Wicca, and Satanism is you. You get into it, and at first it's all sweetness and light and tra-la-la and all of that. And gradually you begin drawn into more serious stuff. It's very much like drugs. And you would know about drugs. Pardon me while I smoke some magic in theory and practice. Behind magic is the idea of the drive for power. You want you want either more wisdom or more power. Is this what we want, Bill? Or is this what you wanted? And this, the, the lie that the various occult groups, and they are legion, believe me, that I mean, there's hundreds of these groups out now. Um, that are all offshoots of things like the Golden Dawn and, and, you know, the Rosicrucians and so on. Are you still talking about Wicca? But all of these groups promise you if, you, if you go deeper into these things, you'll get more wisdom, you'll get more power over your life. And see, this is something you got to understand. That is why young people are attracted to this stuff. Partly because, of course, they're just being saturated with the, from the media. All these things are corrupting the youth. Dungeons and Dragons, heavy metal music, video games, Harry Potter, Hollywood. How is a good Catholic boy in seminary school supposed to avoid the pitfalls of the occult? Oh, right. Jesus was a witch. I had a professor in minor seminary that told me that Yeshua, Jesus, was a witch. Almost forgot. That actually explains a lot. And they want to have something that gives them power over their lives. And they believe they're being lied to and told that magic can do that. That if they want a girlfriend, you know, then they're told, well, there's a spell you can use to seduce this girl. Or maybe they want a better job or, or what, you know, things like that. Or maybe the, the teacher is giving them trouble in high school or college. They want to have control over that teacher. And the lie of magic and witchcraft is that they can do these things. I think they would handle it the same way a Christian would handle wanting power over their life, a girlfriend, a better job, or control over their teacher. They would pray for these things, obviously, like a child asking a parent. So this is dangerous. And the thing is, it's like any other addiction. You get deeper and you get darker, and before you know it, like me. Oh, no, like you? That might be your strongest argument yet. I got into the Church of Satan. And not I'm not saying everybody that's a Wiccan is going to end up being in the Church of Satan. Maybe not. But they're going to be drawn that way. Billy Boy, you were drawn to that. In your desire for power and wisdom, you sought out an easy, instant fix. When things did not go your way, you abandoned it and moved on to the next thing. No respect and no real conviction for anything. What you got to understand, Michael Aquino, who is one of the right-hand men of, of uh, Anton LaVey, who founded the Church of Satan way back in 1966, Aquino was on a TV show once, and he said that basically the difference between Wiccans and what he was is that Satanists understand the source of their power. Witches don't. Wiccans don't. I tried to find where you may have gotten this, but like all your claims, it is not supported, and you give no citation. This very well may have been Michael Aquino's opinion, so who cares? Because Wiccans think this power comes somehow within them, or from nature, you know, from the trees and the forest and the ground and blah 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 and all of that. He said, no, it comes from devils. It comes from the pit of hell. That's where the occult power comes from. If you have found a universally accepted belief in a source of magic shared by all Wiccans and occultists, I would really be interested in hearing it. But witches don't believe in that, and because of that, they think, oh, we can't be touched by these evil things. But that's a lie. That's I tell people, that's like thinking, okay, I don't believe in gravity, so I can walk off a cliff and I won't fall and hurt myself. 
That is the dumbest analogy. Gravity is a force that consistently works as predicted. It can be tested, repeated, and verified by anyone. Magic, however, you have explained yourself, is a force that is unpredictable, not repeatable, and has not yet been verified. Uh, you need to, if you're listening to this and you're a Wiccan, understand that whatever power you may feel you have, it's demonic. Really? Wow. I have not heard that before. Nope. Not once. Not in my entire life. And I'll tell you a story that proves it. A colleague was on a radio show and a witch called in. And he said, well, I'm, I'm a good witch. I'm a Wiccan and I don't believe in the devil. So what I'm doing is, is fine. And this guy said, to him, okay, I'm going to prove something to you. He says, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command that whatever devils are giving you that power will be cast out of you. And you will be completely powerless until you repent. In Jesus' name, amen. And he prayed that prayer over the radio on this guy. And within a couple of days, the guy was back calling the radio station, begging to talk to this guy. So they had him come back in. It turned out this guy was literally flat on his back because the prayer that this man had said had worked. I don't even know why I'm going to ask this, but Bill... Is this a true story or is this bullshit? If true, and this man was laid out on the floor on his back, unable to move for several days, isn't that concerning to you? If it is bullshit, why are you lying about this? What do you hope to gain from lying? Don't you have some commandment against, I don't know, lying? Isn't lying a sin in your God's eyes? And the same thing happened to me. You got laid out on your back, unable to move for several days, too? I was in the Church of Satan. I was deep into black magic, horrible stuff. And I sent a check to the Church of Satan. It came back from the bank. And a lady who was working at the bank that handled the Church of Satan's account wrote on the check, I'll be praying for you in Jesus' name. And literally, within a couple of days of me getting that check, my whole life was destroyed and I started on a slow journey to the true faith of Yeshua. That's that's not the same at all, Bill. You receiving a bounce check that was defaced with a religious message written on it by a bank teller is not the same as being laid out on your back and powerless for a few days. Also, that bank teller should have been reprimanded for writing that on a check. Very unprofessional and I'm pretty sure illegal. If you're a Christian that's really praying and working for the kingdom, if there are witches around, they're going to be attacking you or your family. If you stub your toe or your milk curdles, or if your cow stops producing milk or your meat and two veg falls off, it is obviously witchcraft. Best thing to do is mobilize a small militia armed with torches and pitchforks and then go out and accuse random women of being witches. Best to accuse widows or loners. They don't confess to being witches, simply torture them half to death until they do. Don't be afraid. Witness to these people. Uh, tell them the things I've told you that... Yeah, tell them what Bill told you. Then, after you two have a good laugh, you can honestly sit down and talk with each other and maybe find mutual respect. Even if your beliefs are different, as Gardner wrote, so many gods, so many creeds, so many paths that wind and wind, when just the art of being kind is all this old world needs. You know, I mean, basically, why, why do you believe in Wicca? Wow, a sincere question? For myself, I found a connection to the old gods. I found comfort in the rituals, meditation, and exercises. The best way I can describe it is it makes me feel more human. Not sure if you'll understand that. Now, obviously, I can't speak for all witches, and each has their own reason. What is your reason for that? Because, you know, the Bible is a self-authenticating book. The Book of Shadows isn't. You know, the, these various witchcraft books, and there's literally dozens of them now, they're all just written by some person. The Bible was written by the hand of Elohim through human beings. Bill, the Book of Shadows is a self-authenticating book. The Bible isn't. There are literally dozens of different Bibles all written by people. The Book of Shadows was written by the Lord and Lady through human beings. In all seriousness, Bill, don't you know what a Book of Shadows is to the witch? Didn't you study Wicca for supposedly a decade? A Wiccan's personal Book of Shadows is filled with various things. Writings, thoughts, quotes, pictures, etc. If you know people that are into these things, we do have a downloadable PDF document that's called 
straight talk on how to witness to witches, new agers, and occultists, because they're all kind of very similar in terms of their, for lack of a better word, theology. Oh, yeah. Wiccans, new agers, and occultists love being witnessed to. I'm truly amazed at how very little you actually learned about the wicked during your three-year excursion into that coven in Boston. You do not know the basic tenets of the Alexandrian tradition. You claimed initiation into the Algard, but Algard was started in 1972, and I believe could have the strong, but there was only one coven in New York at this time. You get the history of craft development wrong, and when you get it right, it is outdated information. I've seen the receipts from your lies, and I have no trust in you or your numerous titles. You treat religious practices as a buffet without any respect or dignity. You express no real conviction toward any religion. Anyways, Thank you all for watching. Take care, and I will see you in hell, you heathens.